What's up, everybody? Welcome back to a special episode of Song Lab Live. I got a dope guest here with me today. I'm going to push it over to that side and let him introduce himself and we'll get into our conversation. Which way I'm looking? You look I'm in, looking at you? You can look here. This is the audience. I'm, or you can look at me. All right. Uh, I'm going to look at you. That's more okay. natural. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And what am I saying? What I'm introducing myself. Yeah, introduce yourself. Let my name is know my name is your Darren. socials too. You know, okay, I got you. That. My name is Darren Anthony Battle. I'm born and raised in Phoenix, Arizona. You can find me on social media at Darren Battle mm-hmm. on Instagram. Um, you can also follow Produce Dot Your Dot Life on Instagram as well. Okay. Okay. Shout out. That's the sound effect. You couldn't hear it, but yeah, I don't you got have my round, headphones. You got on. the round of applause coming down. <laughs> so I really appreciate you coming back because we gave this a try, and then we were testing out these new crispy cameras, um, and we had some audio difficulties. So, but now I feel like we got it. Everything sounds good. So we we gonna rock with the rock with the show. All right. And Earl was falling asleep too, man. What's <laughs> yeah, up, Earl? Earl. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> Earl. <laughs> Yeah, man. No, thank you for coming back. Yes, sir. Um, and I hope you don't mind. I want to give the audience kind of what we did the first time mm-hmm. when you were telling us about your origin mm-hmm. and how you got started in music. So we can just start there of how you got started um, as a producer mm-hmm. and, and what got you into music. Uh, music for me was always just a part of who I was. Uh, my father is a musician. Uh, he played bass guitar in a band called Dyke and the Blazers. Um, and, you know, for the time, you know, he was doing it. Uh, but beyond that, he was just a lover of music. Uh, so at a young age, I was getting exposed to all types of music. You know, he was jazz, rock, pop, funk. Yeah. You know, um, all my aunties sung. Um, they played keys. Um, and then my father is also a deacon. So we would go to church and, you know, I would get that real, raw, authentic worship and praise. Yeah. Um, so for me, it was just the sound, the feel, the the energy that I would get from it. Um, I guess my journey into producing came from uh, he had a uh, he was in the mail course. Mm-hmm. And um, they were seeing quartet music. Um, and I remember the uh, Roland, it was a Roland drum machine came out and he would program the drums at home because we didn't have a drum set or he couldn't play drums and mm-hmm. write his songs or do it. So he brought home a drum machine. And um, when I saw the lights and the, and the pads and I knew I could make sounds, it was a rap. Yeah. You know, it was a rap. So, I would hop on his drum machine and, and just make noise. And then I started putting stuff together and salute to my pops for, you know, in the beginning, he was like, man, get off that. You know, you, you don't know what you're doing. Get off. You mess with my drum machine, you know, whatever. But I would just, I just couldn't stop. So he finally sat me down and showed me, showed me how to do it. And then just the basics of it. Then I just I was just hooked. Around what age were you? Uh, Man, was it during that sponge period that we have when, like, you know what I mean? When you're learning, absolutely. Yeah. Whatever that sponge period is, <laughs> yeah. whatever it is, what do they say? It's like five. It's like what? I think it's like pretty much four to like twelve or thirteen. Yeah, five to like yes. It was definitely like, in that age group because mm. I I remember even. Like going back, I remember picking everything up so fast. Mm-hmm. Like even to me, it was just it was like I was picking up everything so fast. So I would definitely say between the ages of maybe like eight, yeah, eight nine years old, you know. So yeah, mm-hmm. that's where it, that's where it started for me. Yeah, that's incredible. And from there, you started to develop your love for music. And you are creating music. Are you doing it every day? Or are, are you 
letting your friends hear it yet? Like, wh- when do you make the transition well, to be like, listen, world, I'm a producer. Listen to this. Like, I think I think the first the first memory I have of like somebody outside of just me and my my father hearing what I was doing was my cousin Kawan, mm-hmm. and by that time. My father had went from the drum machine to there was this program called uh, Notator, and mm-hmm. it was like on this on this computer, and it was like a MIDI based program. Yeah. So so by that time I had gotten pretty good at understanding how MIDI worked mm-hmm. and how to you know put different sounds on different channels and quanti- I was I knew how to quantize and stuff like that. So my beats had gotten somewhat decent. To me, yeah, and uh, my cousin Kawan, who was rapping at the time in a group called uh, the Franchise, you know, we cousins, so he was at the house. I'm like, man, I'm making beats now. Mm-hmm. I was like, I want you to hear my beats. He was like the first person, and um, I was playing beats, and he would just be like, you know, you know, they these is cool. You know, uh, <laughs> he 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 would yeah. always encourage me, but but yeah. but he was like, "These is cool." It, it was always positive, mm-hmm. but then his energy kind of turned into like, "Yo, like, put this on. Can you put this on a? You got something? Yeah, you like, can you put this on like a tape or something?" And so I did, and then he took he took my beats to uh, one of the producers that they were working with, and um. That was like my first experience. And then from there, it was just when friends would come by the house, you know, my cousins would come by the house. So my family was literally my first. Like They yeah. were the first ones getting yeah. what I was making. So the inner, so they always encourage and push. But family, too, they'll tell you, I ain't like it, you know, mm-hmm. which is which is cool. Mm-hmm. Um, I realized that it taught me how to take criticism and just, you know, just whatever okay you didn't like it i like it whatever um but with them telling everybody oh yeah my little cousin making beats my little cousin making beats it kind of just spread yeah so for me it was all just out of love for doing it you know what i mean just making it yeah that's awesome so you are starting to share your beats with other producers Mm -hmm. i've known of you before i met you here like I have heard of your production. I've heard you on other songs. Mm-hmm. I've, you know, it, it was it was a prestigious thing to get a D one beat. You know what I mean? So when did you transition to? Not only are you letting your beats get heard, but you're also getting them rap, I guess, performed on mm-hmm. by other like known artists. Mm-hmm. Um, when did you start making that transition and, and how did you get into the realm of like collaborating with these other, uh, I would just say Arizona legends, Arizona figures. Like mm-hmm. you, you've touched on a lot of people here locally that are pushing for this thing we call music out here in uh Southwest. Um, just relationships, man, honestly, yeah. just, you know, I'm grateful for all of the people who, when they get in front of somebody, mention my name. Mm-hmm. Like I'm grateful for all of them because that's literally how it happened for me. I can't, I can't pinpoint a time where I went out and sought, yeah, an artist to get on any of my beats. Yeah, you know what I mean. I, I, I just never, I never, I've never done that. Mm-hmm. Like even now, like I've never sought out somebody to get on my beats i i've just been in a position to where i'm around enough creative people and creative individuals to yeah. where you know having the relationship having the the know-how they say you know they say to get your gift will make room for you like yeah. i'm a i'm a living yeah you know example of that um but I got to go back to church though, because, you know, growing up, growing up in, in uh, church and specifically in Pilgrim rest, uh, 
Pilgrim Rest Baptist Church in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, you know, at the uh, at the at the time, uh, Bishop Thomas, Bishop Alexis Thomas, uh, was the pastor, and he was very progressive. Mm-hmm. He was very like, you know, and he was about the youth. Mm-hmm. So we would always put on, you know, you can play Christmas plays yeah. and, and, and 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 all that type of stuff. And um, I remember one time we did a Christmas play, and it had like this hip hop undertone that we did. Yeah, and it was it was myself, two of my good friends, and we wrote this song. We were we were the three wise men in the play, and they were like, "Well, y'all gotta come up with a song, you know? Yeah. You gotta come up with a song." So I went made this made this like real West Coast sounding like slap. <laughs> like I'm talking about, it was. It was a slap, and we came up with this hook. It was like three kings on a journey with nothing to lose. I got my cane in my hand and my walking shoes. It was something like that, <laughs> right? Cold. But but the beat was slapping. Yeah. So they let us perform that at church, you know, in front of, like, the whole congregation. And um, that's, one of the, that's one of the times where it was like, for me, I didn't have Pro Tools at the time. I didn't have... I didn't understand any of that at the time. So I was literally on a um on an MPC sixty mm-hmm. that my, my uncle uh Rich Casey had sent to my dad for me. Yeah. Um, who's a who's a producer as well. My uh Rich Casey is a producer as well. And um I didn't know how to like program it to where, you know, it was it was verse hook, you know bridge so i was doing all the drops manually one take wow onto a cd wow or on you know what i mean onto a tape at the time yeah so that was one of the times that i remember like like man like we actually created this whole thing you know what i mean yeah. and um so from there it was just you know that's that MacGyver. That's that like figuring it out and working with the tools you have and being creative with what's around you and what you got access to. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. That's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Um, if we can pivot to produce your life, mm-hmm. and if you can tell me what the produce your life is mm-hmm. and how it how it came to be. Produce your life is uh, a company that I started. Uh, pretty much due to the lack of access to arts, uh, art, just whether it's in school, you know, in our communities, it's just, you know, lack of artistic experiences, you know what I mean? Lack of access to uh, conversations that promote ownership and being and being producers instead of consumers. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I I just came up with the with the with the name. Um, shout out to the hat too. I'm just noticing. Oh, you see, now, the hat I was ready. Like, I'm ready. You see, that's cold, brother. <laughs> that's nice, man. Yeah, Phoenix Phoenix Suns colorway. Yeah, will be available soon. Yeah. All proceeds go towards Produce Your Life programs, workshops, conferences, etc. Yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah, the, so in production, kind of like you said, it's like you, you make the most out of what you have. Mm-hmm. And I feel like it's the same way in life. You yeah. know, you, you got to take the good and the bad, um, but the choice is up to you mm-hmm. to make the most out of it. Um, so I just started to build a brand, uh, a brand, my brand identity around that concept. Yeah. But it's about education. Yeah, honestly, it's just about educate educating our youth and even even adults um, that it's never too late to take control. Yeah, and and produce something, yeah. make something, and and you are able to own the things that you create. Yeah, and that's what we connected at. Yeah, like, you know, outside the music stuff, he's like, yeah, I want to help people, I want to educate, and I was like, me too. Yeah, and so yeah, that's awesome, man. Mm-hmm. And you also traveled. Or produce your life. Are, are you able to talk about that experience? I am. Yeah, I, okay. I am. I didn't know if that was G fourteen classified. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I mean, everything is everything is done now. So yeah, you know, 
Um, but man, I have been just, it's just been a blessing to be able to do uh, the work that I've been doing in Portland mm -hmm. with the Bo Decker Foundation. Um, the Bo Decker Foundation is a, is a creative foundation uh, founded by uh, Sandy Bo, Sandy Bo Decker and um, Tanya Serta. Okay. Um, Sandy actually passed away a few years ago. So now Tanya is, um, is the trustee and she's running everything. So um, I met Tanya uh, via somebody that I was working for. Um, and man, I went out and saw the facilities. The, the, the building is amazing. Mm -hmm. It's like an architectural award winning building. Right. And they got a world-class studio in there. You know, they got yeah. crazy artwork. It's just a, it's just a place where you can just go and just be creative. I seen the pictures on your Instagram and I was impressed. Yeah. It's yeah. It's it was a very nice looking facility. It's a super, super dope space. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, so they do workshops and and you know, for fashion, they do stuff for like knitting. I saw one they did one for like scarf puppets. It's just like a real yeah. it's like whatever you wanna do, we wanna we, so yeah. but anyway, I'm making it long, but um I went to Portland, met Tanya. We had a few conversations. I told her about Produce Your Life. I hadn't even, mm -hmm. you know, completed the entire idea. Yeah. But she, she, after the conversation, she trusted the vision, you know. And then um, I was, I was, I came with a high uh, recommendation. Mm -hmm. And she said, well, let's just, let's just run one and see how it goes. So we did a hybrid one. The first one we did was a audio production workshop. Yeah. Uh, that was the one that we did in this room. And I had you come and sit in the class. Okay. Yes. That was the first, the first one we did. And it was, it was super successful. Mm -hmm. um, so I actually did another one in, in, that was November of last year. And I just did another one a week long in Portland. Oh, nice. Yeah. So I was in Portland for a week. So I did a week long audio production, just creative workshop, mm -hmm. and it went man, it went it went crazy. And and the students that come, like, what are the age ages they are, and like their demographic kind of age group is is high school, mm -hmm. um, and then we had some who were who were going to college, okay, or had graduated, and you know we're just in between trying to figure things out. Yeah. Um. You know, underserved communities. Mm -hmm. um, man, great kids though. Yeah, like, and and they're they're coming to learn. And are they um, are they making music? Are they learning how to uh, you know um, do the mixing and the mastering? Or yeah. So, what? so the workshop I did was an audio production workshop. Mm -hmm. The goal of the workshop is to get them to go from concept to completion. Um, and create a song. So I have all of the, the terminology. Yeah. And I kind of, but I kind of let them dictate where, where we take it, you know, because some of them know the term, some of them don't. Um, some of them really want to learn the terms. Others want to want to know how to do it. You yeah. know what I mean? So I got different types of learners yeah. in the same, in the same class. Um, but working with uh, the Bodecker Foundation they're like, man, give us the give us the curriculum, give us the terminology, but when it comes to to teaching, you know, yeah. it's up to you. You know, we just want to make sure they have an understanding of how to create a song, like the process. Yeah. So when they let me know, I'm like, okay, cool. So I'm teaching about microphones. But what I would do is have them go get the microphone. I would have them go get a, uh, you know, I would show them this is a this is a dynamic microphone. Yeah. This requires phantom power. Phantom power is right here on the console. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So they're getting like hands on learning while moving towards the goal. Yeah. Um. So 
you know, you put kids in a room like that, they're going to be engaged. They right there. Everything is right there. And they're getting that industry sound as soon as they hear it. You know what I mean? You know, when I say they got the top gear, I mean, you got, you got manly preamps, you got the Newman microphones and these, and, and, and it's accessible. It's accessible yeah. to the, to the kids. So man, it was a great week. You can actually hear the hear the stuff that we did. Uh, the Bodecker Foundation has a SoundCloud. Okay. And there's an actual produce your life playlist. Oh, that's dope. Yeah. So okay. so all the songs that we produced minus one um, that we did in November is on their playlist. So on on the SoundCloud is it SoundCloud? Yeah, SoundCloud SoundCloud, okay. SoundCloud playlist. That's so major brother. We did two. We did three songs. In one week. Wow. With a group of kids who had never met each other. Like, or never, some of them knew each other, but they had never been together in the space like that. Yeah. And we ended up producing. And when I say, I'm talking about from concept to completion. Yeah. Like, recording, writing. Yeah. You know, little a little bit of mix on it. I did have to go back and do, do some post mix, but all the ideas, all the, all the, vocals were down when i left so yeah man that's incredible what are your plans next with produce your life are you going to be getting into maybe some events or doing some stuff maybe here locally what what are your next things yes yes we we did do an event here we did a panel discussion yes um, we did do our first produce your life panel discussion um and that was a collaborative event with uh, set list live in Marmara Creative. Mm-hmm. Uh, shout out to Irock, Iron Daniels, and Ana Bustamante. Um, you know, so it went very well. That event went very well. So we're gonna do another one of those soon. Yeah. Um, we are looking at doing uh, some conferences, um, and I am looking at collaborating with uh, other nonprofits to do the same workshops that I'm doing in Portland mm-hmm. here uh, okay. for the youth here. Uh, long-term goal, man, I'm trying to build a school fleet. Yeah. Like I'm trying to do like a, like an academy for art, culture, mm-hmm. innovation, and entrepreneurship. Yeah. Like that's, that's long-term goal. Um, like I feel like if we can get to the place where we're doing that and we catching the kids at that sponge age mm-hmm. and instilling in them that you can do whatever you want to do yeah. and this is how you do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's the key. Yeah. We say that to them all the time, but we don't show them this is how you do it until they're yeah you know yeah whatever age now nah, we need to start letting them know about this stuff at that sponge age group yeah. so that when they graduate high school they really have a choice you understand what i'm saying 100 <laughs> percent. like if we can you're pretty much talking about creating like an institution yeah you know what i mean and with institutions those are amazing because you'll you'll get philosophies and principles when you walk in like this is a code of conduct in which we engage here at this facility yeah and we have this state-of-the-art world-class equipment that you're going to be trained to use and you're going to be in a much uh better position not just with your skill set but with your character as well and we need institutions like that like you hit it right on the head my friend yeah 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 Mm -hmm. that's that's beautiful man um, you mentioned Marmara Creative. I know you're one of the producers that tap in here. We're recording at the Marmara uh, podcast space. Um, can you tell tell me about what it's been like working with Marmara Creative and what that experience has Man. been like uh, for you? Listen, for me, it's about energy, man. Mm-hmm. And working at Marmara Creative and working with all of the producers and writers and engineers at Marmara Creative, it's just amazing. It's like everybody gets it. Mm-hmm. 
You know what I mean? And and I know you know what I mean, but but you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like it's like everybody gets it. And they don't just get it, but they're they're good at what they do too. Yeah. You know what I mean? And they get in where they fit in. You know, it's it's rare that you come into a place with a bunch of men and egos and mm -hmm. you know, they're present mm -hmm. but they don't get in the way. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's so if if you're looking to connect and collaborate with a solid team, reach out. Yeah, hundred percent. Man, I like to thank you for coming back on the show. We're gonna do this again uh, because we're gonna have some different designs for this set here that we're gonna be uh, doing with you. Mm -hmm. And then you and I are just gonna be chopping it up more in general. Yeah. So what I would, what my vision is, man, I would like us to come here on this podcast and kind of talk out some of our plans too. Because I feel like that's going to be kind of like a documentary. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, <laughs> like remember on episode three when we talked about uh, adding in, you know, this element to the uh, conference? Yeah. Like, I just feel like that'll go hard. We can bring in more people to come pod with us yeah. as we flesh out this idea. Um, and I just feel like this is like the beginning of that. Let's do it. Yeah. I'm with it. I appreciate you coming on. Can you tell everyone where they can find you on social media? Yeah. Uh, right now. I'm at Darren Battle, and that's D-A-A-R-O-N-B-A-T-T-L-E on Instagram. And then all of the the workshop music stuff will be at produce.your.life. Okay. Awesome. Thank you, brother. And then it's my name everywhere else. Yeah. Just, just Darren Battle everywhere else. Awesome. Yo, if you didn't know, Song Lab Live is back. So follow us. Check us out. We got new podcasts, new interviews, plenty more content to share. Thank you very much.